Hi everyone, we have a little choosing keeping unboxing here or unpackaging. I've actually already unboxed it. It actually just came in this envelope. Um, can I just say before I start, I love how they put their little stickers on. I always love this about choosing keeping, the effort they put into the packaging, but I really, really miss the handwritten labels they used to put on everything. I think each one of my orders before, I think I've placed three orders with them and they've always had this lovely handwritten label and they don't seem to do that anymore. I don't know whether they've just got busier and they don't have the time to do that now, to handwrite everyone. Anyway, they're very, very nicely packaged. They're in this lovely glassine envelope and a lovely bird sticker so I'm gonna open this and we're gonna have a little look at what's inside I only got a few little bits and pieces there were um, a couple of things that I'd had my eye on for a little while and I got some cards and things as well so we'll just have a little look and then I'm going to swatch the paints and create some artwork with them as well I always hate having to cut the little birds. Oh wow, that's pretty. Okay, let's see if we can get these out of here. Oh, we've got that little package. They're still taking so much care with wrapping the various items, which is nice. Sorry about the noise. I'm gonna stop talking because I'm not sure whether you'll be able to hear me over the crinkling. have to excuse me I'm wearing my really old and scruffy painting card again because I'm working on a lot of canvas paintings this week and whenever I work on those I get really messy so I have to wear my old clothes so they've enclosed a really lovely um, Christmas themed by the look of it has Christmas decorations on oh yeah it's an early bird Christmas offer 10% off our Christmas collection Okay, so I'm going to hide one of the cards because it's actually for Dominic and I don't want him to watch this video <laughs> and see it. So I'm going to put that down there. So unfortunately you won't get to see that one. Um, these are Victorian ephemera, is that how you say that? Ephemera postcards. And I have a lovely letterpress card with the moon in the clouds. Um, so I got that and another card. And these, I just thought, would either look really pretty just around the studio, or perhaps I could send them. I don't really want to open them because they're so nicely sealed, but if I don't open them, we won't be able to see them. Oh, they're really pretty. Oh, I forgot how many there were. I thought there were four, but actually there are six. So I'll just show them to you. Really lovely traditional looking reverse there as well of the postcard. Oh, these are gorgeous. They had several different sets and oh, I love that unchanging friendship. I'll have to think who to give that one to. <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> but yeah, they did different sets and I just really loved these Victorian ones. Is that meant to go that way up? Maybe it's meant to go that way up. Yeah. Another gorgeous butterfly. So yeah, I think these could look lovely, perhaps framed or even just standing around the studio. So in this tiny little package, I'll probably have to cut through this little bird again, won't I? Because they're stuck down quite firmly. This is just a funny little thing I saw on their site. <laughs> and I don't know whether you know what these are, but they're actually pencil caps. They're made of aluminium or aluminum if you're American. <laughs> they're
they're really really light in fact they hardly weigh anything and they're just for if you have perhaps a pencil that's particularly special that you don't want um, you don't want the point to get broken maybe if you sharpen your pencils to a really fine point like I do sometimes and you're out drawing on location and you want to just keep them safe um, or you want to stop them from marking the inside of your pencil case or whatever they just sold a set of four of those and I thought they'd come in really handy for me when I'm taking my uh, pencils out on location so that's why I got those now these notebooks I've seen these on the choosing keeping site for a while now and I didn't really think that I had any use for a notebook as fancy as this I do use notebooks but I tend to use relatively cheap ones just for keeping track of my to-do lists and so on I'm not really somebody who journals so I don't have a really nice journal I have very nice sketchbooks but I don't have a journal anyway I saw these on there look they have marbled edges as well I believe these are hand done by the bookbinder hand done <laughs> that's not great English is it um, hand painted hand marbled by the bookbinder so it has this lovely binding here and I believe this is Japanese paper just really beautiful just so nicely made anyway I saw these on their site and didn't think I had a use for them until the other day when I decided I wanted a book that could just be used purely to swatch all of my art materials. Now I got this idea after seeing one of Christiana's videos. Her channel is Crixis, I have mentioned it before. I'll put the name up on the screen so you know how to spell it and find it. <laughs> but um, she had a little book where she was swatching all of her different art supplies in the one book and I have been swatching as you know um, if I get some new watercolors or whatever I'll swatch them out and I do have a watercolor swatch book but I'm finding that when I'm working across lots of different um, media so I have acrylics, acrylic gouache, traditional gouache, watercolour, coloured pencil, neocolour, pens, all sorts of different things. I thought it'd be really nice just to actually have a record of them all in the one place because I'm finding that I'm swatching them all over the place. I can't find the swatches when I need to and it would be great to have a really nice book just to put everything in. So it will be divided up into sections. This is really nice. How beautiful that is, that sticker. And I really love how we have the choosing keeping branding here as well. I'll just hold that up so you can see it a bit better. I thought if I order one of these with plain pages, you can order them with ruled or plain pages. I thought this will be perfect just for separating up into sections and swatching out all of my various art materials. And then I have them all to hand in this beautiful book which obviously I will keep and just keep adding to whenever I get any new supplies. But it's so beautiful. The paper is quite thin. It's not meant to be like art paper, I don't think, but it's gonna be fine for swatching. And it'd be great to actually have that, to keep a record of all of my supplies in. I think that will probably be something I'll be doing on my Patreon when it's launched. Um, I don't know whether this video will be going up on YouTube before my Patreon launch or after. If it's after, I'll put the Patreon link in the description. So the other thing I decided to buy, um, you may know that I already have a few of these sets. I think I'm going to have to cut that again. Be really careful not to damage the box because it's so pretty. Um, yeah, I have a few of these. These are the retro Japanese Gansai paints. Um, they do different sets. It's making me nervous cutting this. <laughs> they do different sets and they're, they have a range either by season. I have the winter season. Uh, Dominic bought that for me last Christmas. And that's really beautiful or they do them by decade. 
Oh, look at that, they're so pretty. They didn't used to come with a ribbon and they also didn't used to say choosing keeping on them. So this is new. I have the, which decades do I have? The 60s, 70s and 80s. And that was all they had last year. This year, they've released the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s and 1950s. Of all of the sets, the one that I loved the most was the 1930s. So that's the one I decided to get. Let's see if we can get this off <laughs> in one piece without having to cut it. So here we are. And they didn't used to come with a little swatch card in. So that's new. Oh, it's letterpress as well. I can feel that it's slightly debossed, is that called, when it's indented? So that's really nice. So you can see why these colours appeal to me, can't you? <laughs> I've had my eye on this set for a while and I felt like I'd bought so many watercolours recently that I didn't want to, I couldn't kind of justify buying it. And then I thought, I really love it. And I kept going back and looking at it and looking at swatches and seeing people swatching it on YouTube. And I just thought I will treat myself to that because I know that I'm gonna love using it. So this is my fourth um, decades set. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get the others because the colors didn't appeal to me as much and I already love the ones I have. I want to do more with the Gansai sets. So that's gonna be something I think you'll see coming up on my channel in the future where perhaps I um, mix the different sets together and start painting um, across various sets and things like that. I haven't really done that much with them on my channel. I intended to and then I got distracted and started doing other things but yeah I'm loving that. I think those colours are really beautiful. So what I'm going to do next is swatch those out and then I will create some artwork with them. I really love that they've included a swatch card this time. I'm a little bit concerned though because all of the names are obviously in Japanese. Now, shall I attempt to say them? Do you want to hear me mangling the Japanese language? Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do because they look like they're really difficult to pronounce. I think actually what I might do is maybe put them into Google Translate. Shall we do that and just see what it comes up with? Okay, so I've put the first one into Google Translate. It says Japanese detected. Um, the English word for it is fungus ochre, which is an absolutely brilliant name for a colour. So this is how you say it in Japanese. Okay, um, say it again. Kin olido. No. Kin olido. Kin olido. Why can't I say it? Hang on. Kin olido. Kin olido. Was that? somehow close probably not anyway fungus ochre let's swatch it let's start by just wetting this i mean i've seen some people when they've been swatching these they go over the writing at the bottom i guess to see oh i've just dropped a little bit there <laughs> i guess to see how um transparent the paint is but I think I'm just going to swatch within that little uh, rectangle. I love these paints. They're always so creamy when you wet them. Okay, that's probably enough, isn't it? Let's try the fungus ochre. I think that's probably the best name ever that I've come across for a paint or a colour rather. Okay, so I'm trying to do a sort of gradient here we will see how successful it is so yeah just a really lovely yellow ochre which is a color I use a lot in my work um, I really love these earthy colors let's just see if we can swatch that out a bit there this is a good brush actually to do this for those of you who'd like to know, it's the Betty Hayways watercolour brush, um, number five. 
has a really nice point but holds a lot of water as well. Sorry, I'm fussing over this, aren't I? Probably fussing way more than I should. It's just such a nice swatch card. I want to make a good job of it. I don't know whether I will. I think I might have. If I wet it too much, I don't know. Anyway, that's pretty good. We'll say that's okay. Right, the next one, I'm going to Google Translate it again. Okay, so this one here is... Kurocha. 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 Black tea. So this one looks like really dark chocolate. Oh, this is nice. I knew I would love this set. Oh, that's a gorgeous, really dark chocolatey brown colour. These brushes hold so much water. I'm trying to control it a little bit. The great thing about Gansai paints is that you can use them a little bit more opaquely. Um, so they're a little bit more like gouache. But you can also use them just like watercolour. And so they can be very transparent if you add quite a bit of water to them. They're quite versatile and I love the consistency of them. Oh, this is quite good actually. I'm quite proud of these swatches. Getting better. Okay, the next one, um, I'm just going to wet it and then we'll ask Google Translate what it is. Okay, it's telling me that this one, the English name is skin colour. Okay, say it again. Hadairo. Hadairo. I do apologise if I have any Japanese viewers. I am so sorry. I'm going to try again. Hadairo. Hadairo. It's funny because it sounds like it has a D at the end, but it's actually I-R-O, which is interesting. But um, yeah, it means skin colour. It's actually a really beautiful colour. I'm thinking it reminds me a bit of the Sahara yellow, is that what it's called? Neo colour pastel. It's like this really soft, gorgeous, quite sandy kind of yellow. I feel like I should have a cloth here to dry my brush on a bit. I didn't think of that. They look really nice together, don't they? Okay, let's just wet the next rectangle. Okay, so it hasn't given me the English translation this time. It's just saying the Japanese word again. So I'm just going to play it. Kawagane. Ooh. Kawagane. 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 And if you ask it how to say it in English? Cow again. Cow again, that's much easier for me to say. But I don't know what it actually means, but let's have a look at the colour. It looks like it's a really dark one. These are such beautiful paints. Okay, let's see, what is this one? Oh, it's like a midnight blue. Really dark, dark blue, like the night sky. I wonder whether it translates to something like night sky. If I have any Japanese viewers, let me know. What does, um, I forget how they said it, but cow again, cow again, what does that mean? Because I wouldn't be surprised if it was something to do with the night sky. So it's a very noisy aeroplane outside. Oh, this is very much my kind of palette. It's funny because as soon as I saw these, um, I kind of knew that this was the one I was most attracted to out of the new sets. 
And um, I had a couple of people actually mentioning it to me in comments and saying, have you seen the 1930s set? Because it's really you. <laughs> so you all seem to know what I like. So I've got a bit of a funny voice today. It's a bit croaky. I notice it's more prone to being like that since I had that really horrible bout of tonsillitis in the summer. If I get like a little bit tired or I've spoken too much, my throat just really seems to go um, kind of quite dry and croaky. <laughs> anyway, I'm on the Manuka honey and all sorts of other things and I do think it's doing me a lot of good, but yeah, I still get this. Anyway, let's see what this one is. This is a really gorgeous colour. Um, I'm going to get Google Translate again, so <laughs> let's listen to what it says. Okay. Aketsuchi. 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 It means open soil. I just love these names. I think the names are so beautiful. I really want to know what that one is in English. Wow, how to describe this one? Kind of rusty, kind of like an autumn leaf, but a little bit more coral, I would say. I don't know whether that's coming across on camera. But yeah, what a beautiful colour. Gosh, this um, palette goes together so well. I don't know who decides on the colours for these, who puts them together. But whoever you are, you did a very good job. And it really does have a feel of the 1930s about it. Like Pre-war period. Okay, so the next colour coming up is this really dark brown, and let's hear how it's pronounced in Japanese. Konyecha. 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 And, funnily enough, dark brown. <laughs> dark brown. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> it was, in fact, dark brown. Let's see how much darker it is than the one at the top. They're kind of similar. What was the one at the top called? Black Tea, I think, wasn't it? Oh yeah, this is more of a, I would say, sort of burnt sienna kind of colour. Which is something I do tend to always have in my palette. I find it a really useful colour. Actually, I say that, but I redid my main watercolour palette the other day and I took out the burnt sienna I had because it wasn't really dark enough for me and kind of replaced it with something else. Um, I'm going to do a video on this by the way. I really want to show you my new um, massive watercolour palette. <laughs> I got the biggest one I could find on Jackson's um, so it has an extra row my other one had three rows, this has four. Oh no, don't don't blend into the, or bleed rather, into the other one. After a few months of um, using my watercolour palette, I decided to just revise it because obviously I've bought some different colours that you've recommended to me in the meantime. And once you get using something, you kind of realise what you need. So yeah, I've just... Um, I've changed it around a bit, I've added some new colours, I'm really excited by it because it's just the most gorgeous palette of colours now that's perfect for my way of painting. Everyone who puts together a palette obviously, you know, has their own preference and, um, and what I do might not be applicable to the way you paint, but I think it's always interesting even if someone paints in a really different style to me or they use a different colour palette, I always find it really interesting to see what they chose and their reasons for choosing certain colours and so on. So I'm going to do a video about my new main watercolour palette and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll find it inspiring. Um, that's a really pretty colour. That really does look like burnt sienna. So this one, um, this looks actually in the pan as if it's going to be a sort of teal colour but we'll see. So 
in Japanese it is. Gunroku. Oh. Gunroku. 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 I'm thrown because it actually looks like it would be Gunroku. But it says that it means Army Six. Army Six in English. Which is a bit strange, but let's have a look. Oh wow, this is a really pretty colour. It's that kind of gorgeous teal that I love. I got a paint that was almost exactly this colour, actually, an acrylic paint the other week. Is this the colour of the um, Japanese army uniform or something? I must confess, I don't know. I'm wondering why it's called Army 6. <laughs> I bet Google Translate has messed that up, hasn't it? That is a beautiful colour. I really like how it goes with the one above it as well. Oh, I think it might be a separating colour. I can see it kind of separating into... Um, blue and green. Oh, that'll be interesting. Just let that do its thing for a few minutes. Okay, so the last one is according to Google Translate. Kodai Murasaki. Kodai Murasaki. Kodai Murasaki, which means ancient purple. <laughs> she said that in a strange way. Ancient purple. This sounds like it's going to be a really interesting colour. I was going to say it looks like it might be quite a plummy kind of colour, but maybe not. Oh, maybe more aubergine, perhaps. Either way, it's a really dark purple, which is beautiful. Oh, it's got me wondering what I can paint with these paints next. I have an idea. So that's how they look all swatched out. It's a really interesting and beautiful palette. A lot of earthy colours in there, which I love, a lot of dark colours. Um, it's quite muted as well, but it has these really gorgeous colours at the bottom here that just sort of lift it a little bit. This beautiful ancient purple and this separating blue-green colour. So I'm gonna go and just have a think about what I can paint with this and I'll be back in a bit but um, for you, it's just gonna be a few seconds. <laughs> 